it's your brother Larry Adenekon welcoming you to the really really knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God all powered by the pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Education, the PLACE This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on how Jesus protected Judas's image, coming from Luke chapter 22, 23 to 27. Let's pray together. God of heaven, we bless you and worship you, O God. You are good, your mercy and your forever. Thank you for who you are. And Lord, as we go on to share with your people this morning, we ask you to help us at it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be utterance, let there be hearing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 27, 23. And they, the disciples, began to question among themselves which of them would do this thing. Now, there was also a dispute among them as to which of them uh, should be considered the greatest and he said to them the kings of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors but not so among you on the contrary he who is greatest among you let him be as a younger he who governs as he who serves for he who, or who is greater he who sits at table or he who serves is it not he who sits at table yet i am among you as the one who serves all right praise the lord so from 23, he had spoken about the, the betrayer, if you remember the last time we were here, in, in 22. The Bible says now, they began to question among themselves, who would do this thing? <laughs> now, that was very, very uh, interesting. And that's what shows us something, that it wasn't obvious who would do it. These people were moving together. And then the, the teacher or their master, the, the, the captain, the leader, said, one of you will betray and everybody was wondering, really, who could who could do that among us? You know, meaning that it wasn't obvious who could do that. Um, they couldn't say definitely it must be so so and so. They couldn't say that it was it wasn't so clear who could do that. Now this was despite the fact that Judas had some shortcomings that Jesus knew and which uh, John also spoke about in the book of John, which we had read before. Um, <clears throat> But at least as at this point in time, these people did not, they were not sure of who would be. Maybe John had uh, inside information and that's what made him write the things he wrote. I don't know. But certainly the, where they were here, they were wondering who could it be. Everybody looked okay. Now that leads us to something very important. That's his leadership. Jesus here in spite of what the things he knew about Judas, did not allow everybody to know about Judas's weaknesses. He probably knew each person's weaknesses. He did not allow them to know what was going on. He did not um, rubbish him before them, did not call him names, did not dress him down before them. He did not make it obvious that this guy is not straightforward, you know, in the midst of them. And that is how a leader should do. A leader, um, something that's are some things peculiar to leadership that is confidentiality a leader should be able to keep confidence a leader should be able to manage a, a personal information such that you not um, um, rubbish the image of one person a leader should be somebody who can keep secrets a leader should be somebody god can count upon that when he gives him a secret or something like that he would keep it truly those are the kind of people god will tell things okay um Jesus certainly did not let them know the kind of person Judas was. And how that he had been working with us for three, three and a half years, he really hasn't changed. He has remained the same. He has not changed one bit. He didn't allow them to know that. That was why everybody was wondering, who could this thing be? There was nobody that was clearly the likely culprit because Jesus completely covered that area. He completely protected the image of, uh, of, of Judas in spite of who Judas was. And I want to challenge some leader. That is the minimum standard that God expects of us. We should be able to protect the image of everybody around us. Your, 
um, privileged information about these people should not be used against them like that, so that people would know, you know, you know, everybody knows how, how please let's talk about somebody else. You know, uh, it shouldn't be. That, and that's what we learned from the Lord Jesus Christ here. So he actually, over the years, knowing the kind of person Judas was, he did not reveal it to the others, probably had, had sessions with him alone, like he had with every other person, trying to help the, each person, you know, but never really revealed everything to everybody just like that and made him, you know, so open and hanging him, you know, dry before everybody else. Uh, thank God for that. And I pray we learn from there in Jesus, Matthew, in chapter 2, verse 24. It says, there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. This is interesting. <laughs> if this kind of dispute should arise among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest, it implies that each of them had been recording fantastic testimonies that are really, really not inside the Bible. If it was only one or two recording fantastic testimonies, there would be no, there would be no debates. Everybody would say, ah, these people, ah, they are, you know. But obviously, it must have been that each of them had been recording fantastic testimony. Each testimonies, each of them had been having exploits of his own, you know, and each of them had been coming back with beautiful stories on his own. So much so that it was not easy for them to say, this is the person that is the greatest among us because everybody was getting testimonies. And that's what I believe that God wants for the church today, that the church will be full of people with testimony, testimony, and that there's no star, you know, the way things are today, that every Everybody will be having beautiful testimonies. That's what I believe that God will have us uh, uh, be, the way we have us be in the church today. So they were having that um, issue. The second thing I see about that is that their values, they still had issues with their values. They were still using the values of this of this earth, you know, to determine things. Who is the greatest? Who is the biggest? Who performed more miracles? Who recorded more converts? Who had a bigger church? Who had, a, you know, and all the things that we measure here. You know, that was that was still part of their problem. So they had issues with their values, and Jesus came in to say something, you know, about that. That's what we are going into next. The third thing I see here is that at times when you know people belong to a group. And maybe you are approximately the same age or that's a common factor keeping you all in the group. It's amazing how um, people can behave just like little children because, you know, you are just in that group. Even though all of you are maybe age, it's an age group or some other group, something brings about equality. It's amazing how these people can behave just like children. You know, at times, uh, some of you will know what I'm talking about. God help us. So, Jesus now taught them a big lesson. The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who do so are called benefactors. This is interesting. What, he, what he's trying to say is, is this. That people who are like, let's say, kings and others who, are so, who, who rule over you, who actually um, um, uh, you serve them, really, uh, for no good reason other than the fact that they are just kings or rulers, you know, whatever. And uh, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, you are serving them and saying you are, you are still calling them benefactors. You are still looking at them, still giving them the honor of my king. And you are still bowing down and doing things like that, even though that you are the one serving them. Somehow they turn around and say they are serving you. <laughs> at times I see some of these royal families they go on and talk about they are serving people really you are serving who are you serving at the end of the day it's people who are serving them they have, they have cooks they have valets they have uh, everything nannies they have everything they have been served all their lives and yet they would you know they would say they are serving people now that's what Jesus is saying here the people you serve and yet you continue to call them benefactors you know at the end of the day that's what that's what happens but I want to bring it to our own our own little area those of us who are general overseers you see you know at times we also we are the ones that have the best of things really we, we have the best of things and yet you know uh, these people still continue to consider us benefactors quote and unquote that's the truth about the matter just being just saying okay <laughs> you know that's what happens we, we th these people they would they would do anything for us they will carry your bible they will carry your shoes they will do anything you know and yet they still look at us benefactors the bible says that this is the world system actually and that is not the kingdom system that's what jesus was trying to teach here jesus went on to say that the person who is greater um and i give and he asked the question who is greater the one who sits at table or the one who serves is it not the one who sits at table yet i am among you as one who serves yeah and that's the something i'm not sure many of us can say that oh i am the one at table i am the greater one and yet i'm the one serving you 
It's not like not many of us can talk that way. Not many of our leaders can talk that way, you know. And maybe, you know, some reality, like I was giving an example, they would, they would say they are serving you and all that, yet they are served all their life. They can't even wear their own shirt by, by, by themselves. They can't wear their own socks by themselves. They can't put toothpaste on their toothbrush by themselves. And yet they say they, they are serving you. What way? <laughs> you know, and upon all of that, we now say that, oh, they are the benefactors. The same thing in our own way here. Yeah, in our, I'm talking about the church now. The same thing applies there. Now, some of us who are in positions of leadership, we are supposed to be the ones serving. That's what Jesus was teaching. Yeah, unfortunately, not many of us can, can say that, that I am among you as one that is serving. Not many of us can say that. And it's a challenge that we should come to a place where we can actually say we are serving the people, not the people serving us at the end of the day. Thank you so very much for sharing time. Weekend has come for some people. Therefore, I wish you a good one as it rolls along. Thank you. God bless you.